Amarillo, Texas, October 22nd, 1972. The National Hot Rod Association's 8th Annual World Finals of Drag Racing. From throughout the United States they came, the top drivers and drag teams that competed in 35 regional meets to gain a chance to put it all on the line in the final showdown to determine the world final champions at each of seven classifications. Drag racing has increased in popularity over the years and is steadily growing in spectator interest. The sport has its heroes and favorites, as do other sports. It's a match of engineering skill and driving skill as these competition machines screen down a quarter-mile track at speeds up to 230 miles per hour and elapsed times of six seconds plus. Drag racing is a sport that presents all of the color, excitement, and challenge that anyone could want, both as a participant and a spectator. The National Hot Rod Association is the parent group that sanctioned these meet and enforces rigid rules and regulations. Wally Parks, NHRA president, has spearheaded the growth of the sport throughout the last 20 years. Well, the National Hot Rod Association is an outstanding organization, and the man behind it, the president, Wally Parks. And Wally, another great world finals here at Amarillo. Of course, we have had some bad weather, but the competition is fierce. Well, we've got fantastic competition, and the weather is always a problem with drag racing because we can't run when it's raining, but fortunately it isn't raining, and uh, we're getting some excellent performances. Wally, how about the reception of the city of Amarillo to the uh, National Hot Rod Association World Finals again this year? Well, there's never been anything to match it yet. Actually, I don't uh, know how you could beat it because we've had such a, a cordial welcome here since the first day we came in to talk about having the World Finals here, and uh, the community involvement is just uh, almost overwhelming. We, we feel... Uh, I think worse about the weather conditions kind of uh, uh, putting out some of our downtown activities that we had scheduled here than we do about the curtailment on our racing activities. And it's just been something that drag racing has needed for a long, long time. And believe me, we're just uh, delighted to be here and be part of it. Wally, this is something that takes a great deal of effort and planning, and I know you'll go right to work on 1973's World Finals. Won't you right after this one's over? No, uh, we're going to do it before this one because we've been doing it for several days, and uh, I think what we'll probably do is uh, look at our schedule and see if there's a possibility of moving forward a couple of weeks and uh, getting into a better possible weather condition because this is late in the year to plan drag racing, and if it fits in with Amarillo, Amarillo's schedule and our schedule, I, uh, we'll have a better one even at 73. From 40 states, the fastest cars and best drivers in the world met in Amarillo for the World Finals. Although preliminary events were hampered by wet weather, the final races were held as scheduled on Sunday. Each drag team is composed of a driver, chief mechanic, and backup crew that is trained to keep each car performing at an optimum level. In addition to the thousands of spectators that follow the sport, manufacturers and several hundred track owners and operators also come to Amarillo for the World Finals. Manufacturers, representatives of tires, engines, oil, and many other racing items, put their products to the test with these men of speed. A popular figure at any drag meet is Miss Hurst Golden Shifter, Linda Vaughn. Well, we've got some great automobile racing drag style here at Amarillo Dragway. We also have some lovely beauty. This is Linda Vaughn, Miss Hurst Golden Shifter. And Linda, it's a pleasure to have you back in Amarillo with us again. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be back. I've really had a good time here. It's been kind of a hectic week trying to fight the weather, but there's yeah. been some great action here. Yes, it has, and good racing. And I'm telling you, these people are really racing fans in Amarillo. How uh, how did you actually get started in uh, drag racing as far as coming to all the races are concerned, Linda? Well, as you know, I'm Miss Hurst, and I represent racing all over the world, but I like drag racing the best, and I won a big beauty contest, and they renewed my contract about eight times now, so I've been with them for going on eight years. What's been the most exciting races that you've possibly been to, Linda? I know you've been to so many that it's probably hard to pick one, isn't it? Uh, you, in drag racing, I had to say the Nationals is about the most exciting, and I like the World Finals because that's where everybody puts together, you know, the points and all. And then like IndyCar racing, of course, is one of my favorite too, because I cover it all. But uh, there's nothing like drag racing and top fuel cars and funny cars. More than 300 cars have won invitations for this event based on their past performance in other NHRA meets around the country. The time trials were yet another hurdle to pass in their quest for the title. The competition is divided into seven different classifications. The stock cars are regular production models from American companies. 
Driving skill and the performance of the unmodified engine determine the top cars. Everyday automobile gasoline is used to power these cars, which are essentially street or family cars. The 32 classes are broken down into 16 for standard transmissions and 16 for automatics. In 1972, the NHRA rules changed the super stock eliminator category. The old stock eliminator class was moved in with the super stock to allow the interested drag fan to race his factory production car against others that have a few modifications. The new class was greeted with mixed reactions. This is the largest of the different categories, with genuine drag fans having a chance to try their limited capital and experience on the strip in one of the most exciting eliminator classifications. The Pro Stock class includes 1969 and later American cars that are permitted to run lightweight fenders, hood, and rear decks, but the original engine must be used with up to two four-barrel carburetors or four two-barrel carburetors. The modified production division car looks much the same as a stock passenger car, but further changes are allowed, including transmission and larger tires. Eight classes of modified production cars were ready for the world finals. Modified eliminator cars, the classic street roadster or hot rod, is also in this racing division. The competition category this year includes those cars that have extensive modifications over the stock cars, yet weren't up quite to the top fuel class. A popular group because of the admitted way that men make these machines run, the competition class of 1972 saw the integration of the now defunct gas dragster category. The funny car has come into its own in the past few years and is popular because it's really a short wheelbase fuel dragster with lightweight fiberglass body that gives it the appearance of a regular stock car. But don't be misled. There's no comparison to the models in your dealer's showroom. These cars have greatly modified supercharged engines and run on special nitro fuel. These cars are real crowd pleasers. At the top of the line, the all-out drag machine is the top fueler. These dragsters are designed with one thought in mind, to cover the quarter-mile track in the fastest possible time of about six seconds. With rocket light speed, these vehicles are expensive, highly engineered cars that compete in nine different classes. Some have two engines, others have one engine, either in front or behind the driver. These are the cars, the drivers, and the people that follow this all-American sport. race day with 35,000 people in the stands, the pits were crowded with the drivers, their cars, and the mechanics making last-minute adjustments to allow for the altitude in Amarillo and the damp weather. The 1971 winners, such as Phil Castronova in the funny car division, were assessing their chances and the stiff competition. Well, funny car competition at the World Finals will be outstanding, including one of the top stars, Phil Castronova. And Phil, you got one run in yesterday. Did that tell you a great deal? Yes, it did. You know, we ran a good number. We were a little low on power, so we know where to go now. How do you tune a car in a little cooler conditions here, uh, as, far, as far as warm conditions are concerned? What, what do you do different to tune one of these funny cars? Well, it's just not the coolness. It's the temperature. You're 3,000 feet above sea level, and you have to spin your, your uh, motor a little faster than on sea level. See, so you have to go by the combination of the pulleys from the blower to the motor. And, and by the nitro, you, you get it. Phil, the competition here, as we mentioned earlier, is going to be fantastic in the funny cars again this year, isn't it? Yes, it is. There's, everybody's always a competitor. I know you have to run heads up with a guy in the other lane for you, but what kind of ET is it going to take to win this funny car championship this year? Well, yeah, yesterday the best was a 661. I think they'll, we could run some 50s today if the track comes in. Uh, you said you haven't looked at the track that much, but listening to some of the early times, it looked like it may be drying out. Yeah, the pro stockers seem like they're running like usual, you know, so we know that the track is probably there. Bill, what do you think your chances are taking that championship? World Finals Championship. That'd be a dandy, wouldn't it? Well, I won last year. I'm going to try to win again this year. Bill, the best of luck and glad to have you back in Amarillo. How about Amarillo? Is it it's a fantastic town. The best dragon town we've ever been to. Kelly Chadwick, longtime Texas Panhandle drag racer, was also in the pit area, busily preparing his entry for the stiff competition. Kelly Chadwick is from Amarillo and, of course, the hometown favorite. Kelly, could you tell us about your funny car? Keith, I guess I've got an oddity in this car. It's a Chevrolet-powered car, a Chevrolet-powered Chevrolet. All the rest of the cars are Chrysler-powered uh, cars, no matter if they've got a Vega body or what. 
So we've got a Chevy in our car. It's a 488 cubic inch motor. The car's run 654, 218.26, I believe, mile an hour. And uh, it's a 70, 72 Vega with a 72 454 motor in it. What do you have to do on race day to get things ready? Are you all set to go? Yeah, you got a lot to do. Yeah, we're all set. We're really ready today. Uh, we had a little trouble qualifying yesterday. We had some experimental tires on the car and he got crossed up. I almost got the guardrail, but uh, the car's ready today. We've got the old tires back on. We think we got a good chance. The weather's cold and you've got to make adjustments for this. A lot of the guys, we're all alike out here, really. Uh, you know, everybody's coming over to me saying, what do you do? And I say, well, I don't know, you know, because they think I know because I live here. But the weather changed so fast out here the last two days, it's really been kind of a handicap for the guys. On the track, Dave Benesek of Hacienda Heights, California, in a 1972 Buick, was ready to take on George Hall of Glenville, Michigan, in a 71 Buick. At the lights, it's Dave Benesek, stock eliminator world champion, with the national records of 13.56 ET and 101.84 top end speed. This drag racing business isn't just for men. There were two women who qualified for the world finals, but they weren't destined for a showdown against each other as Judy Lilly of Golden Colorado was in the super stock class and Shay Nichols of Abilene, Texas was running in pro stock. Judy's 68 Plymouth brought her from regional competition where she did well enough to collect the necessary points to make a repeat performance at the world finals. As a wife and a mother, Judy makes the drag racing a family sport and is earnest about working for a win every time out. Judy was denied the chance at the finals in the Superstock when Dave Borkman of Muskegon, Michigan in a 72 Dodge and Larry Nelson of West Lafayette, Indiana in a 55 Chevy brushed aside all comers to meet each other in the final running for the title. Taking the win with a national record elapsed time of 12.20 seconds was Dave Borkman. Indicative of the dedication, color, and enthusiasm of drag racing contestants is Ray Murphy of Ames, Iowa, who drives plum nuts in the modified production class. Murphy and mechanic T.J. McDonald express their feelings about the World Finals in Amarillo. What do you think about the World Finals in Amarillo, and how long have you been here? Uh, we came in Tuesday. Uh, decided to take off a little early and come down where it was warm, which didn't quite turn out that way, but uh, decided to take a little vacation and... and uh, Really enjoying ourselves. Uh, the reception we had was great. It's, we've traveled all over the country, uh, especially this year, and this is the greatest place. People are wonderful. Good. How does it look for the competition in the races today? It's going to be tough. We're not even sure we're qualified right now. We were second earlier yesterday afternoon, and now we're up to sixth before this last pass, so we don't know exactly where we stand. It's going to be tough, though. It's a rough road up to the top, isn't it? You better believe it. <laughs> Okay, Ray and TJ, thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. In the modified Eliminator final race, the Blevins and Izakowski Corvette from Freehold, New Jersey, was ready to meet Joe Williamson of Louisville, Kentucky. This was the big race of the day for the modified Eliminators, the culmination of months of work and thousands of miles of traveling. Williamson was a split second too fast in getting off the starting line, a foul giving the race to Paul Blevins, who set a national record lapse time of 10.55 for D-Alter. Tom Trish of Rockford, Illinois, the defending competition champion, the big winner in 1971, was back again to try for another championship. Tom, this is your second trip to the World Finals, your second trip to Amarillo. What type of uh, problems do you encounter in racing here? Well, the uh, atmosphere at Amarillo is uh, different than any other track that we race in in the Midwest, where we're from. Uh, the altitude is quite a bit higher than, uh, than what we're used to, and there's always a problem the first couple of runs to get the car to work properly. Uh, this... Uh, this uh, season here with the rain, uh, the time has been cut down that we've had times to run in. So, and, uh, and, uh, everything's been pushed into one or two days here, and we're having quite a bit of trouble with our personal car trying to get the motor to the right position so it's uh, have its maximum horsepower. Now, you were one of the big winners in the World Finals last year. How does your uh, competition and the uh, chances stack up for this year? Well, it's rougher. Every year it gets rougher. It's hard to, to <clears throat> maintain a, oh, a steady pace, let's say, because... Uh, Records change and uh, cars get fast, somebody gets slower, and it just, it just changes all the time. This year it's rougher than last year, by far. This time, though, Trish didn't make it as he was beaten out by Roy Rastetter's D. Altered, who was to see action in the final race. 
Wayne McMurtry of Pueblo, Colorado, and Roy Rastetter of Hailstetter, Texas, have the top two competition cards. When they met in the final round, it was McMurtry's double B dragster covering the course in 7.56 seconds to outdo Rastetter's A altered eight and a half seconds. In pro stock, Bill Bruffy Jenkins is one of the most respected contenders on the drag circuit. From Malvern, Pennsylvania, he brought his Chevy to town ready to run whatever challenged him. Bruffy's toy will be one of the favorites in pro stock today. And you've been spending some of the time this morning, uh, I guess, making final adjustments and tuning up. How's it looking? Well, it still looks like uh, we're in pretty good shape. I can't find where there's anything wrong with the car. And uh, check, the tr you know, look the track over. I have not made a pass this morning, but... Uh, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be radically different than it was yesterday, so I'm probably pretty well set up for the track. What's the fastest time for this car? Fastest time anywhere? Yeah. Uh, well, on sea level tracks, it's run 925, 928 at range, ET, and 149 miles an hour. What do you figure it would take to win uh, up here in this altitude? Uh, about 980 in that range. Now, I, I run a 980 here, and I feel so I can probably run in the neighborhood of 972, 975 if I have to. And uh, yeah, if I don't break anything, that should win. After wading through the preliminary foes, it was Jenkins and Ken Don Darrow from Northridge, California, and Don Nicholson's Pinto. <laughs> Jenkins took it in the style that he's making a habit. The grump blasted out a 9.77 to Don Nero's 9.93. With the post-doc title decided, the crowd was ready for the two big ones, funny cars and top hewlers. The unique funny cars are powered by ear-deafening engines and utilize a parachute to help them stop at the end of the track. One of the favorites was Butch Maws of Mount Clemens, Michigan. Maws and the Mark Higginbotham Vega roared into the semifinal round of funny car competition only to come up against a Gene Snow Dodge driven by Jake Johnston of Fort Worth. Maws lost his engine as Johnston flew to the lowest elapsed time of the day, a 6.51. It would be Johnston in the finals. The funny car division had a couple of exciting moments in the way of spectacular crashes. Al Marshall and Doc Holliday were barreling down the track when Marshall lost control of his Mustang and hit the guardrail. The body of the car was torn off and came to rest in the infield. All the rest of the car was thrown and torn apart and scattered down the track. Miraculously, Marshall climbed out of the remaining wreckage unhurt with his brush with death. Charles Thurwanger, driving a Hemi-powered Vega, tried to duplicate the Marshall attraction. He was racing Butch Maws when he, too, hit the guardrail, severely damaging his car, but again, no injuries. All the power and speed built into these cars, safety comes first, and every precaution is taken to protect the driver. Jeb Allen of Bellflower, California, one of the youngest drivers on the circuit, had brought his family and his praying menace for the World Finals test. This is your first time for the World Finals, right? Yeah, this is my first. I haven't been racing quite a year yet, and uh, this is my first time at the World Finals. What do you think about uh, the Emerald Dragway and uh, the World Finals being held in this part of the country? I think it's good because you're at a high altitude, and like I never run at a high altitude before, and I have to learn to run the car completely different. It's a whole different story. You have to put a lot more air through the motor and less nitro to lean the motor out to get it to make horsepower. And we found out that it was a little harder than we thought it would be, and so we hope today we'll get it dialed in just right. Allen was to meet Clayton Harris in the semifinal showdown. Harris of Moulton, Alabama, was the Eastern Conference leader coming into the Amarillo races. His new dimension Fuller had set a national record of 6.21 in the first round of the World Finals. Clayton, how do you feel today about your car? Everything all set for the races? Yes, sir. We're just freshening up the engine a little bit here. We feel like we have a pretty fair chance of running a good number today. What do you do on, on race day? What do you have to go through and check to make sure things in, in order? Well, naturally, you want every piece of equipment uh, or every part of the car the best it can be for the race. We have to go five rounds and it'll be uh, to win the race, and it, it'll be quite strenuous on all the parts. Who do you figure your toughest competition is going to be today? Well, it's a lot of tough guys here. It's hard to pick out a, a, only one. You know, this is a world championship, uh, the end of the series, and uh, all the good guys are here.
And you were here last year? Uh, yes, sir. We were here. We went to the semifinals last year. How do you like racing in Amarillo? Oh, fine. Great. Very fine place and town exceptionally receptive to racing. Good. Thank you, Clayton. Yes, sir. Semifinal, top duel, Clayton Harris and Jeb Allen. Allen jumped to a quick lead that was quickly erased as Harris overtakes the whiz kid and cops a snap in the finals against Jim Walter. Now with the sun fading, losers loading up for the long trip back home and fans standing for the final two big races, the world finals were coming to a dramatic close. During the day, Clayton Harris had made several impressive runs against Bob Noyce, Hank Johnson, Herm Peterson, and Jeb Allen. He had worked his way through some of the best while Jim Walter of Painesville, Ohio, had done the same with other entries. Walter was driving a Chrysler-powered 392 dragster that eliminated Ed Rennick, James Warren, also Don Wrightsell, and Raymond Beagle. A full year of racing was on the line as Harris and Walter stayed. Both machines suffered big problems. Harris was ahead when his dune invention broke a rear end. Walter blew a tire, broke a main shaft, and lost a blower belt, but had enough speed built up to cross the finish line first. Well, a guy that has to be most excited over a big top fuel win. This is Jim Walters, and Jim, I guarantee it was a fantastic day for you at the World Finals, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I'm, I'm so happy I can't even believe it. Uh, it's just great. It's a long way from Painesville, Ohio, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. 23 hours of straight at it. <laughs> how did the competition go for you, Jim? Were you well? You got to be pleased to win anything, but uh, how did it go in the past couple of days for you? Well, I have not had a good year this year. I've I've had that we crashed bad in. Uh, Oh, I guess it must have been early September. We crashed bad, and I, we had kind of a set down there, and I've had not a real good year, not like I've had in the past, but uh, we just kept at it, and I come down here, and I knew I was going to win when I left home. I, I went four rounds here last year, and I said when I left home, I'm going to go one better than I did last year, and I had my mind made up, and he put that in the paper, said long on desire, but short on power, and I showed him. How about coming from a champion? How about Amarillo, Texas? How were you received here in the NHRA again this year? There is no city in the country that receives racers like Amarillo, Texas. Well, Jim Walters, coming from a real champion such as you, we certainly appreciate that, and we hope to have you back in 73. I'll be here. The final race of the day, the World Championship in the Funny Car Division. Larry Fullerton of Beverly Hills, California, the Fullerton Doohenny Henny powered Mustang, and Jake Johnston driving Gene Snow's Dodge. Here it is, the two strongest drag racing teams of the day going for the final big prize. Johnston and Fullerton, both powerhouses, both pops in their field. Blazing through the finish first was Larry Fullerton in the Trojan horse with an elapsed time of 6.58 and 222.32 miles per hour. Well, it was a big win in the Funny Car Championships for Larry Fullerton and the Trojan Horse. And Larry, it must be an exciting day for you here for the World Final. Well, it was very exciting. It was a really, really great thrill going through the lights and knowing that I won the World Finals. Uh, we sure had a hassle getting here. It, the competition was fierce again this year, wasn't it, Larry? Competition, I think, was as strong and as fierce here as it is at any other racetrack I've ever been in my life, I swear. It was fantastic. It was one of those tough races for you all the way. It was, uh, how close was it down at the end, or could you tell down there, Larry? No, sir, all I knew is I had him, and I didn't shut off till I got 100 feet past the last light. The world final champion, funny car champion, Larry Fullerton, again, congratulations on that Trojan horse. Thank you very much. The world finals of drag racing 1972. New champs, Larry Fullerton, Jim Walter, Bill Jenkins, Wayne McMurtry, Paul Blevins, Dave Bortman, and Dave Benesett. Amarillo once again had hosted the National Hot Rod Association's World Finals competition. These drivers and cars will go on now to other races in other parts of the country, other sanctioned events on the drag racing schedule. In 1973, it starts all over with regional races determining the field for the next World Finals, which will be held again in Amarillo, Texas, October the 5th, 6th, and 7th. Between now and then, you can see many of these same professional drag racers at local tracks in your area. Perhaps you, too, will want to follow them to the World Finals in Amarillo 
next October.